The average solo GP is dead. Being handcuffed to a practice that only makes money while you're drilling crushes your freedom. Being trapped at the office is no way to experience life. And doing more fillings and crowns ain't the answer to freedom. Stop it. Freedom comes when your practice makes money without you. Freedom is choosing how many days and how you dental. Ready to forge your freedom? Then keep listening to become a super GP and super CEO. This is the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Let's go. Hello, all you beautiful people out there, and welcome to what's sure to be the best episode of the Titanium Practice Podcast yet. I'm your host and personal freedom coach, Dr. Stephen Freeman. How y'all doing today? So first things first, please, if you can, uh, hit the subscribe button for this podcast if you like what you're hearing. Uh, Also leave a review if you can. And then head on over to titaniumpractice.com. Sign up for our newsletter that comes out at the beginning of the month so that we can keep you up to date with all the information that I've got for you because I can't do all these in podcasts so if we can get you the information in print it is actually easier to get out to you all right so sign up for that over at titaniumpractice.com all right on to today's topic today's topic we are talking about robots man so this past week boston dynamic released a new robot that i mean it can bend move dance i mean humanity look out i mean i love terminator 2 everyone always talks about skynet between the combination of the robots that are coming the ai that is happening around us right now uh, obviously a huge uh, catchphrase about what's happening in our world right now of using the term ai for like everything just you know everything which is funny because you know computers have now been around for a long time and and you know they didn't call it artificial intelligence back then just like when i was a kid we called it software not an app so this stuff has existed is just obviously getting exponentially better uh, it's still not there yet i've messed around a lot with trying to create images on chat gpt uh and it sucks <laughs> i mean or at least maybe i don't know how to do the prompts very well because some of the stuff i've tried to put in there comes back and it's it's absolute garbage and i'm not exactly sure it it must be me because otherwise they wouldn't be putting this stuff out there but but having said that i worked a lot with uh using chat gpt to help even write things for the office i encourage you all to get a subscription to chat gpt so you can just write up some prompts some way there's a good way to maybe even respond to potentially an angry patient uh, maybe respond to an employee if some of you aren't very good with verbiage um, and be able to just kind of write some documents. Uh, I think it's like $20 a month uh, compared to a lot of your bills and what it can actually do for you. Um, I have found it very helpful in being able to craft some things. Uh, I'm pretty good at being able to put pen to paper, so to speak, about coming up with uh, things to write. But this, if you haven't messed around with it yet, you just need to go on there and play with it. I mean, it's it's really cool. You can have it give the response in any type of voice you want to give it. It, um, you know, and, and and by voice I mean, you know, from the speaker's perspective. You know, I speak differently than you do, and you can just glean uh, information from that thing. That uh, how how the famous person, like if you wanted Tony Robbins to write an inspirational speech for your team, they'll write it in the tone of Tony Robbins' speech. So. Uh, check it out. Very cool. Definitely think it's it's part of what we need to be doing today uh, as practice owners uh, and be able to deal with patients and employees. Uh, speaking of AI, you know, right now there's a lot of programs out there that are being used to help you in diagnosing things on your X-ray. Uh, about four or five months ago, we uh, got Overjet, and it is not perfect. It is far from perfect, and a lot of the times, it will try to diagnose things that are not there. Uh, essentially, any dark area on an x-ray, it deems a cavity. So that gets a little bit annoying, because you'll look at, your, you'll look at their dashboard, and it'll talk about you know, how many cavities the patient has, and you click on it, and, and clearly, a lot of them are not cavities. But, but, 
they definitely help in identifying some areas I know you would miss otherwise. Uh, I've seen it with my associates over and over again already uh, when looking at the x-rays. I've missed, you know, looking at an x-ray and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, you click on over and look at the way that overjet's looking at it and bang, there's a, you know, a cavity that you would have otherwise missed. Um, it's, it's very cool. I am on the fence about whether I'm keeping it or not. I don't think it's quite ready for prime time at this moment, uh, but keep your eye on it. Um, it I, I do think I am going to keep it. I, it helps enough. There have been enough times where I've used it that I've said, hey, you know, we probably wouldn't have diagnosed that otherwise, and then we've gotten in there, we've opened it up, and it was, in fact, decay. Um, but it's, again, it's, it's that whole concept of it's, it's another tool in your tool belt. Okay. For a long time, people were using diagonodents. I honestly don't even, I can't think of the last time I heard anybody bring those up, but for a long time, it was this little laser pen you put over the top of the tooth. It gives you a reading whether or not there's, you know, decay underneath a, you know, a central groove or something like that. Um, you know, you have your explorers, you've got your eyeballs, you've got this. So it's another tool in the tool belt. Uh, I believe ours is $500 a month right now. So a little bit more pricey than talking about G chat GPT, but I mean, what is that? Is that one extra crown you do a month that it pays for it and then you get the ease of diagnosing all the other things? Uh, one of the cool things about it is they actually partnered with, if you're in network with a lot of insurances, they partnered with, I think, nine of the big guys uh, in the insurance world that they will actually accept their diagnosis for perio and uh, accept their diagnosis for a crown. So it will actually give you... Um, a readout or tell you the percentage of tooth missing that's either um, uh, filled or decayed or missing. And if that percentage is 51% or greater, those nine insurance companies will accept that as a diagnosis for treatment for crown. I mean, how often do you fight with the insurance company to get your crown diagnosis accepted where there's like, well, this didn't need a crown. And they get the letter back and your patient sees that and they get all enraged of, hey, this company that doesn't want to pay out money just said that they don't want to pay out money. And then they get pissed off at you. Awesome. I mean, it's like, what a great business are they in? It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but they will accept that diagnosis if the DMF uh, is, is greater than, than 51%, then they will pay for that crown. That doesn't mean they won't pay for the crown. I'm just saying it's another, you know, well, I'll say tool in your tail bell again about getting the diagnosis accepted. And the same thing for the perio is it will now measure the uh, amount of bone loss in an area. And depending on, it's got a formula and however it spits it out, uh, it will, the insurance companies will accept that as its payment uh, or, or the fact that they will pay then saying that you did in fact diagnose periodontal de disease correctly, even though you've got the eyeballs and the, uh, perio probe and you should be able to do that on your own <laughs> but they don't want to pay the patient and they don't want to pay you so they want to do everything they can to keep all that money in their pockets uh so ai i mean it's it's happening i again i i do think that we're going to keep it uh i definitely am on the fence about it i think it's going to keep it better i don't i don't know if the other ones are better out there i know there was one pearl uh is another company and another one that's escaping my mind right at the moment um but pearl where I might maybe not do keep Overjet and try Pearl is because Pearl uh, integrates into EagleSoft and we are uh, we use EagleSoft and so I thought hey you know what right now for what we need to do we actually need to go out like there's an icon on your desktop uh, and it's one button you touch it it launches and and once you're there it's really easy but it's also you got to think about going back into it and you know I it, it's so hit or miss that I think a lot of the time my associates right now don't like the idea of, hey, I got this extra button I gotta click to go into it, which sounds, I, I am about as lazy as it gets in doing things. I mean, I want simple, 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 simple. Um, you know, I never wanted to have a boat unless I had a dock in my backyard because I knew I'm not gonna drive to some marina or put some boat on a hitch and drive it on, you know, down to the, to the, to the marina and, and drop it in the water or whatever. I, d I don't want to do that. I want to walk out in the backyard, get in the boat, go play, lift the thing up and be done with it. Uh, any extra steps you need to do, the less likely you are to do them. So that's why I think we might just switch on over to Pearl then since it integrates into EagleSoft. 
so that it's actually there in the system that they're using so they don't need to do another step to it. Um, but, but those are kind of my thoughts on AI right now. Obviously, they can design crowns. You know, it, it's, it's, it's going to, again, another step that's just absolutely revolutionized den dentistry. And it's all very cool. We're practicing at a very cool time right now. I know there's a lot of inflation. I know that insurancers are cutting back on reimbursements. Um, having said that, we actually got our Delta uh, <laughs> reimbursement raised uh, not too terribly long ago, which is awesome. I mean, we're getting rid of them, but... Uh, uh, it was cool to actually see them bump up the price because I haven't seen them do that in the 15 years that I practice. So uh, when you consider normal inflation at 2% over the course of 15 years, that's a big bite out of what you're actually bringing in. Um, so, so that brings us to the point then of talking about the robots. And one of the cool stories that if you saw this week, one of the, I, I don't think it was a Boston Dynamic, I think it was a different company, came out with a dog that's got a flamethrower on it. You can now buy a robotic dog that's got a flamethrower on it, and it's legal in all 50 states. <laughs> I mean, you, you know you got that annoying neighbor or whatever <laughs> that does stuff and you just want them to go away <laughs> or just like walk along. I don't mean like torch them or something like that. But if you walk out a flamethrowing dog, who's going to mess with you? And they're only 10 grand. I mean, good Lord. I, I just, you know, watching this thing be able to walk and move and do what it can do, it it's, looks like it's worth more than 10 grand all of its own, and then all of a sudden, you put a flamethrower on its back? I mean, talk about your childhood dream. Like, you know what would be cool? It'd be cool to have a robot dog, Mom. Oh, you know what would even be cooler? Is if it had a flamethrower on the back. I, th I Think about it. I mean, put yourself in your 10-year-old shoes again and think about how freaking cool that would be to have a flame-throwing dog, and you could now have one. And your mom would have, like, patted you on your head and said, oh, you know, you dream about the silliest things, and now it's a freaking reality. I mean, that's just cool. That's just cool. Um, but, you know, also talking about those Boston Dynamic robots that were just released, and I'm not even talking about they've got their own dog or, you know, pony or whatever the hell you want to call it. But they've got th that, this humanoid robot that they just released. I, it just It's crazy because we are just at a point in time in history where advancements in robotics and technology in general are just, you know, it's, it's this curve that's happening. And it's, we're right at the beginning of this hockey stick curve that's going to occur where we will just not even recognize this place in another 10 years. I mean, these robots are coming for everyone's job, and ours included. You've probably heard about the uh, robot that is currently, I think it just passed 40,000 implants at its place. I, I mean, you know, they're, I think they're a quarter million dollars right now, so I don't know why you would buy one. Because again, if you, if you don't personally want to freehand your implants, uh, guide it. Fine. Do the guide. Get a 3D printer for $10,000, which can then make your night guards and all that other stuff. But then just make your guide for a practically free and then use a guided kit and you can place an implant. You can start placing them tomorrow. I mean, it is it is so easy to place with a guide. I'm not exactly sure why we need a robot to be placing implants. And that's not necessarily out of fear of it taking my job. I'm sure I will be way done doing all this stuff by the time that the robot has actually started to replace the dentist. But currently right now, the robot still needs someone to set it up and make decisions about it. And, and then the robot just does the work from there. So someone would need to be trained about that. But I don't know how, you know, what is that? What is the dentist's job then in the future? Because they've got robots that they're working on as well. China looks like they've got, um, it is not approved yet, but they've got a working robot that will do root canals. And it uses, I believe, a YAG laser uh, to um, clean out the canals. And then it has, somehow it's able to like create this uh, airtight seal over the top of the tooth. And then it has got, it's got this injection system to actually do the fill for you. They didn't really go too much into description of talking about actually creating the access opening, which I think for most of us is kind of, that that's the tricky part about doing endo, is to access the tooth and then to be able to identify all of the canals. But there's actually guides to be able to do that as well. You know, they're a little bit more difficult because by the time you put the rubber dam in there and then you put the guide in there, there's a lot in the mouth. And especially if you're talking about trying to work on the second molar, you just start to run out of space. 
but this is all where dentistry is headed. This is where it's going. There's a thousand percent going to be robotic dental surgery, the norm. I don't, I don't know the time frame of it. I, I don't know how much it really matters what the time frame on is because the idea is, is that dentistry is changing at a rapid pace. And it's interesting because I always feel like dentistry is, well, I mean, it definitely has lagged behind medical um, investment and in technology. And there's been way on the forefront of that stuff for, for, for medicine, which again is the stupidest thing that, you know, how is dentistry not medicine? But that's a whole nother topic. And thankfully, I'm actually glad that they're separate most of the time. Most of the time, I am separate. glad that they are separate because of the fact that um, ultimately, we don't have to deal with a lot of the bullshit that the medical doctors have to deal with. Having said that, there are things like where, where patients feel like if something didn't work, they don't have to pay for it. And if you say it out loud, if it didn't work in, in, in a medical doctor's office, there's no way they'd ask for a refund. I mean, it, so there's good and bad. And one of my favorite sayings, every solution presents its own problems. Um, but dentists were truly the first medical specialty to spin off way before, you know, it ever got, you know, it escaped the umbrella, so to speak of, of medicine. And somehow people think the mouth is detached from the body, which is the exact opposite because it's probably actually where your health starts and somehow it didn't get included in their health. Anyways, and rant there back to the robot part of it is like, the office is evolving. And I don't think, all of you listening to this, you aren't listening to this unless you want to evolve too. So I know the audience out there is listening and thinking to themselves, hey, I want to change. I want to evolve as well. But you need to be aware of these things. I mean, it, it, ultimately speaking, if, if you have to think is like, well, who is going to be paying for that robot. Someone has to pay for that robot to actually do the dentistry because they're they're going to be expensive. They might be a quarter million dollars now and they probably will be in the future. I mean, obviously by the time that more people are buying them, the price ends up coming down on it. Somebody needs to buy it, but who's going to do that still needs to be someone there to actually do the work. So like, is the dentist going to be replaced? I was thinking, how cool would it be if there was actually a robot that did cleanings? And we could say goodbye to our hygiene friends and actually like stick this thing in your mouth that just is like this high pressured like cleaning system that would just get all that crap off of their teeth. I mean, now there's something you would see every dentist lining up for and say, I'll take 10 of those, please. I mean, that would be very cool. I don't know how to do it. That's not my arena. I don't know. But but you need to be thinking about where dentistry is going. I mean, we are not going to be immune to this whole thing of, of robots replacing employees. And I mean, if you, if you've got a kid, if you've got, you know, younger relatives, they need to be thinking seriously about what are careers that will be the last ones for robots to take. And because if you had this conversation 10 years ago, you probably sound a little crazy. And maybe I sound a little bit crazy right now in talking about it like this, but it's just happening so rapidly and the price of labor is going up so rapidly. I mean, $20 an hour minimum wage in, in, in California, holy crap. I mean, you can't. And so, so you pay the person $20 an hour. And they're likely to call out sick a lot. They're likely to, you know, just do a half-assed job versus a robot that will never call out sick. And yeah, it might break down. So maybe that's our version of calling out sick. But they don't need medical, you know, insurance. They don't need to be, oh, you know, Tina spoke badly about me at lunch yesterday. And I just think I might need to take a personal day this after. I mean, good Lord. How cool, like when you say those things out loud, how cool would it be to have a robot assistant or again, a robot hygienist? I mean, that is what will push the need for this technological improvement because the cost of labor is so much. It, it's, it's crazy. And it's, it's, you know, you all got your, you know, money from the government when we were shut down. And yes, we were shut down. Like that was not our choice. Our offices were closed. And I'm sure a lot of you were really scared and said, what the hell is going to happen to my livelihood for now and forever when this, when the world got shut down four years ago. But 
now you got the problem of inflation. You've got the pressure of wage growth in our industry because so many hygienists retired and there weren't very many hygienists to begin with. So now all of a sudden we've got fewer. And I, I, I think Georgia said that they were opening a new hygiene school because they actually recognized the problem. I love the state that I live in, but I'd be real nice if they'd get on the, the ball as well and be like, hey, we need more of these because they create high paying jobs too. Even if you create, even if you kick more hygienists out, there is still such a gigantic need. My office gets so many new patients from our surrounding offices because they can't see, they don't have the capacity to see the patients in a timely manner to get their teeth clean. And that's pe what people want. What they want is either their teeth cleaned or uh, some type of emergency. That's what people want, all right? Or maybe if they're missing a tooth, they want that implant or maybe cosmetics or braces. But generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't want to be in pain and they want clean teeth. They don't, they don't want you. They want those two things, to not be in pain and to have clean teeth. And if you don't have the capacity in your building to do that, they're coming down the street to me because I've got so many chairs. I can, I can gladly, even if I don't even have a time slot for them, how many people do you think cancel on a given daily basis? We've always got to, we can just create room. We'll sit them, you know, in a room and we will get to them. I mean, not even make them wait. I mean, it's just like we can, we can have, we have enough people in the building and enough chairs in the building that we can get to them. So that's something you got to think about. Again, a lot of you don't want to have some huge practice and it comes with a lot of headaches, with a lot of headaches. But if you have a job or business, you're going to have headaches. So you just kind of trade one for another. This is really what ends up happening, but you just don't have to be in the office as much. You don't have to hear about the headaches as much. You get to go do fun things versus just being in the office to hear about the headaches. But we get so many from these local offices that just do not have room. And they're, they're your typical dental practice, which a lot of you probably are as well. You've got five chairs and you can only have so many hygienists in five chairs because you know you need your production, but people want clean teeth. So they come to us. The same thing about the emergencies. They come to us. Because we can see them that day. Patients in pain and they call and they say, hey, can you get me in today? And you say no. Well, they better love you to be willing to wait another two days or something like that to come and see you. Otherwise, they're going to the next person that can get them out of pain because they don't want to be in pain. So, yeah, I mean, it, it comes with headaches, but it also comes with uh, positives. It goes right back to that quote that I gave a little bit earlier. Every solution presents its own problems. Got some more headaches by having a huge building and tons of employees, but I can see those patients. And that's why we get tons of new patients. I also live in an area that's growing right now. Like everyone's grow everyone's moving here. It's, it's crazy. And I'm sure there's a lot of you live in growth area oriented areas too. And you're just like, where are all these people coming from? It's nuts. It is yeah, the world has changed so much in the last four years, it's really difficult to wrap your head around because obviously Florida has always been a destination where people move to. Uh, I mean, it would put it on steroids the moment that COVID happened. I just, it's, it's crazy, um, which is great because then we also have opportunity to hire some great people who are moving in from other areas. Um, but obviously this podcast isn't about that. It was just more of the idea of there are things that you may not be thinking about of what, what is maybe happening in your office right now that is benefiting some other offices. Is if you can't get them in, they're going to go somewhere else. The, the flip side of it is, though, is, you know, you know, we had a lot of problems with, you know, flushing tons of money into the system and that inflation is getting out of control. And if you have a lot of uh, insurance based patients, your income is basically fixed unless you can crank out more production or do higher paying procedures. How do you do that? Introduce implants, introduce endo, introduce ortho. All of these take so much less chair time. It basically can quadruple to whatever 20x your capacity number is to essentially now you've, you've compressed time and then therefore you've increased capacity by doing that because now you've freed up tons of chair time because rather than taking, what, two hours to do an $800 crown, if you do an implant and you do it in a half hour time slot, like that's what I, when I was practicing, when I first was building this up, that's what I would do is I'd 
prep a crown, go over and place an implant. And we had CEREC at the time. It would be milled, and then I would go back in to cement the CEREC when I was done with my implant. Okay, so I've just now tacked an implant onto... I, I don't know how you want to look at it. I guess I tacked an implant onto a crown appointment. And so that's I've just bounced back and forth doing that all day long. It was great. It was easy, too. That's the cool thing. But now you've taken, instead of just a two-hour crown appointment, I've now tacked on you know a $2,000 implant onto it. I mean, now you're cooking. Now you've got some production. Now you want to throw on aligners or regular traditional braces into your practice as well. Now they, they need to come in a little bit more frequently, but they're for real quick appointments. They're like for five, 10 minute appointments. So they come in more frequently, but they're, they're tiny appointments, but you're getting a huge revenue boost from including those things into your practice. And so that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say to you is this is where your freedom comes from. This is how you do it. First, we're going to make you a super GP, then we're going to elevate you to the point of like you getting to choose what you want to do. You want to really ratchet this thing up now and you want to become a super CEO? Fine, we'll talk to you about how to do that as well. But we just reduce the time it takes for you to make a dollar in your chair. And when you do that, you can either just cut back on days or cut out dentistry completely and bring in associates. And that's exactly what I did. It's exactly what I did. I mean, if I still practiced, I know I'd make a ton more money, but I'd much rather just go out and play. It's the one thing I cannot get back in my life is time. So I created the time for me to just go out and play. I mean, it's just that that's how the formula works. And that's what titanium practice is all about. Okay. So all of these things are coming. You need to be ready for them and knowing that these robots are, 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 there's, they're not going away and it will affect our jobs as well, positively and negatively, because again, they're absolutely going to have assistants that can do this stuff for you. These robots will be a benefit to us, but they might also be a negative in the fact of you can now be replaced in the near future once these things can place the implant. Now you need to have patients buy into it as well where patients are going to feel very uneasy about having a robot do the surgery, but they've also been doing this in, in medicine for a long time as well. They've had surgical robots. But the more and more everyone gets used to robots in general being in everyday life, the more they'll know that it's reliable and, and it's totally fine to actually have the robot do the surgery and it's probably going to do a better job than you. But please, again, if you want to get into the implant game, the surgical guide makes you a robot. The patient doesn't know that. The patient doesn't understand that. But it makes you a robot and being able to place these things ridiculously precisely. You plan the whole thing out ahead of time and you just basically plop down about four drills into the patient's mouth, screw in an implant and say, thank you, Mrs. Smith. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for letting me help you out. It's great. That is what placing an implant guided sounds like. And how, how could you not want to add that to your practice and add a high paying procedure to your practice? Because it is just that simple. Okay? So anyways, keep your eye out for this stuff. You know, keep looking for it because it will absolutely change the world. It's going to change dentistry. We've got printing. We've got AI. We've got robots. The, the future is quickly, quickly evolving. You need to stay nimble and on your toes and be prepared for it to enter the practice and be on the leading edge of it. I've, that's what I've always done that. I've always been on the forefront of bringing technology into the office and I've never regretted it. Even though, as I said, I was on the fence right now about the AI with Overjet, I, I, I still, I'm glad it's in the office. I don't know if it's worth 500 bucks a month to me right at the moment, but I'm glad it's in the office and it's never really steered me wrong. So please stay on the leading edge, bring these things into your practice. It will improve your life by increasing um, your production in the chair in the speed at which you can go ahead and bring home a dollar so that you can be home with your family versus doing more things at the office. It will make your life easier, I promise, okay? Like I said, head on over to titanium, titaniumpractice.com to get our insider's newsletter. And then if you can leave a like and or subscribe to our podcast, I'd really greatly appreciate it. And tell a friend too. If you've got a friend who thinks you think, you, uh, think they might um, 
get some benefit out of listening to this podcast, I'd really appreciate it. All right. So y'all have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye. You've been listening to the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Please hit the like and subscribe button and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Titanium Practice. Questions or comments? Send an email to info at titaniumpractice.com. Join us next time to help turn your average practice into a titanium practice.